everybody. Man, I had a really interesting week uh, talking to our service people. We have a great team, uh, but every once in a while they need to, to consult the old man of the group uh, for a question or two. And the first one I got was about a gentleman who called in and, re and wanted to know if Tygo had a recommendation for an epoxy so that he could permanently attach one of our TS4s to the back of the module. Yep, what he wanted to do was take a TS4, put some epoxy, and glue it right onto the back sheet of the module. The service tech told him no, and then she called me and told me about this, and I said, you're absolutely right to tell him that, but do you know why you're right? And so she came up with a really good answer, like it's probably one that we would immediately jump to. She said, well, it probably violates the warranty. I said, yeah, which, which part? And so we got into that, okay? Uh, then I got another um, call from one of our service techs uh, about a gentleman who bought a bunch of our product, older product, on Craigslist, had it connected to a charge controller, and it wasn't working right. I said, all right, let's 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 find out what's going on here. And come to find out, this gentleman was using a charge controller that is not in our compatibility list. Okay, I'm not going to name the manufacturer, but it's not on there. Okay, and we have a, a way on our website to find out the compatible inverters, charge controllers, whatever, that our TS4s work with. And we get dozens and dozens of requests for new products to be tested uh, for compatibility. No problem. Now, for both of these techs, I asked them, was this person calling in an installer or a homeowner? Because when I get a dumb question like that, that's the first thing I ask. And you'd be surprised how many times they answer installer. However, the overwhelming majority of people that ask those kinds of questions are homeowners, DIYers. I do not like talking to homeowners on the service line. I don't really like that our products get out there and can be bought by anyone. That's just me. That is not Tygo's position. That is just me dealing with 15 years of people who don't know what they're doing, calling into us and expect us to, send, to spend five, six hours, three days, three weeks trying to get this system to work because they don't know what they're talking about. Now, there's a couple ways that you can approach this. Okay, The, the first thing that I always go to is warranty. And we have some very specific clauses in the warranty. And warranties are written by lawyers because of the stupid shit that people do. People who buy stuff that want to DIY, and I can appreciate that, but there's a couple things that manufacturers have to do to protect themselves against liability, against all these other things, right? Like, for example, the guy that wanted to glue the TS4 to the back of the module. I'll ask you right now, what would have happened if he had not called us? I know you guys know, you've seen the thermal imagery, you've seen what happens to modules when they melt out or catch on fire because of these hot spots. Yeah. The guy that didn't know, didn't have a clue on how to connect the TS4 to this charge controller, right? That's, that's not so bad, but in either case, they get mad at us if we can't help them, so they go cry to Reddit, oh, Tygo sucks, and that's the, the, that's the sentiment. And then, oh, I guess I won't be using them. And then buried way down in the comment section, somebody says, no, you're a freaking idiot. That's not how it works, right? But by that time, nobody reads down that far. And so the damage is done. Yeah. So as manufacturers, and I have lots of friends out there who work in all different sectors of this industry in manufacturing. We're, we're inverter manufacturers, battery manufacturers, module uh, connectors, combiner boxes, all that. 
right? We have limited warranties. And so the first thing I tell uh, my team when I'm training them every week is that when you get these calls, you need to bounce it off the warranty, right? Yeah, okay, you can do that, but you will violate our warranty, okay? So instead of getting 25 years for that TS4, you get five years. Or if you do that, you get zero years because in every warranty out there, regardless of manufacturer, there is a clause that says you have to install this as per the installation manual, as per you know manufacturer's guidelines, whatever. But then there's also something that says that you have to install it as a qualified person. Qualified person. Okay, fine. So what is a qualified person? Yeah, that may be open to interpretation, but we can go to the code, National Electric Code, and they have a definition of what a qualified person is. And so they have to have intimate knowledge of the system. They have to know, I'm paraphrasing, they have to know what they're doing, and they have to have attended an electrical safety course. Okay, now I would argue that half the installers on site probably don't fall under the definition of a qualified person. That's a different story. Okay, uh, homeowners, I don't know. I get, I get, oh, I've been an engineer for 30 years. Yeah, those are the guys that usually mess stuff up. Yeah? But I guarantee you, in the high 90th percentile, that those homeowners have not been through an OSHA 10, OSHA 30, OSHA whatever course. I guarantee that. Okay. So we also, for all the people that like to buy older stuff on Craigslist or eBay to save a few bucks and then go install it on their Unibonner cabin somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, we also have a clause for that. Okay, this has to be the limited warranty applies to somebody who has bought our product through an authorized dealer. Okay, and some dude that pulls out a box of equipment in a cardboard box with everything just thrown in, that's not an authorized dealer. Okay, so this isn't just Tygo taking the hard line. Okay, this is any manufacturer, I guarantee it. Okay, and we are under no obligation to help you. We are under no obligation to help a homeowner, somebody who bought our stuff online somewhere from the back of a truck, whatever. We are not obligated to do that. We do, and we will to as much extent as we possibly can. Okay, but we have to have a reasonable ex, you know, expectation of somebody who's installing this equipment. Okay, if they don't even know how to strip a wire or they didn't know they should not epoxy something to the back of a module. That is a profound ignorance that can only be addressed by classes and training. And we, as manufacturers, if our stuff gets on some public website, not eBay or Craigslist, but there are websites out there that sell our stuff, all e they sell a lot of solar stuff to a lot of DIYers. Okay, fine. But anybody, anybody can grab that stuff and start slapping it together. And that scares the heck out of me. So if we can't ensure, and we can't stop them from doing that, we probably have a relationship. I don't know. I'm not bagging that website at all or any other website that sells our stuff legitimately like that. We probably, there's probably some agreement. I don't know. However, at the very least, at the very least, if they're not going to go through training, if they're not going to talk to anybody pre-installation and they're just going to go for it, then you better, and this goes for us as an industry, you better have documentation in there that makes it damn near sailor proof, right? And I've been using that terminology for years during my training. If you can make something sailor proof, then that means you can probably make something that a sailor could install and not kill himself or damage equipment. Now, that's still, you, you can have the best documentation in the world, but the people don't read it, it don't mean nothing. And we have a serious issue with that. I know we do, and I'm sure you do too, because of the calls that we get. Calls that can be answered from a data sheet.
or an installation guide or a quick start guide. They don't even read that. And I know they don't because I've been on site with our stuff. And the first thing they do is throw that thing, throw that documentation in the corner in the trash. Okay, so don't try to bullshit me that, oh, we always read the document. No, you don't. No, you don't. Matter of fact, it's so bad. I even made a shirt that has the sentiment RTFM on it. Read the fun manual. All right. So, everybody, we got to pull together on this one. We got to at least make sure the documentation is right because nobody wants to be drugged through the mud because you got people out there that don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay. Nobody wants that. So, pull together, get your documentation in order. Really, really push for people to take a certification class or a training class, webinars, whatever it takes. We got to do it. We got to do it. That's it for this mini rant. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. I am so thankful for everybody in this industry, particularly my buddies. The people that, that are in this industry are just great people. It, it, this industry, I've always said this, seems to attract good people, and you guys are. Can't wait to see you at the next show or event. Until then, see ya.